Now we're gonna do lesson number 22. And that is what I see is a form of vengeance. Today's idea accurately describes the way anyone who holds attack thoughts in his mind must see the world. Having projected his anger onto the world, he sees vengeance about to strike at him his own attack is thus perceived as self-defense. This becomes an increasingly vicious cycle until he is willing to change how he sees. Otherwise, thoughts of attack and counterattack will preoccupy him and people his entire world. What peace of mind is possible to him then? So I wanna read this again because this is really, really important. I'm gonna go back to the very beginning. Today's idea accurately describes the way anyone who holds attack thoughts in his mind must see the world. And how, do, how does somebody who holds attack thoughts in their mind sees the world? As a form of vengeance. So having projected his anger onto the world, he sees vengeance about to strike at him. So once I'm angry, I see others are coming now to attack me. So his own attack is thus perceived as self-defense. So if they're gonna attack me, I have every right to attack them. This becomes an increasingly vicious cycle until he is willing to change how he sees. We have to look at things differently if we're going to stop believing that, there, that others are out to attack us. And I'm gonna give you a really good example in a minute. Otherwise, thoughts of attack and counterattack will preoccupy him and people his entire world. When you're preoccupied with attack thoughts, you're gonna see people trying to attack you all over the place. What peace of mind is possible to him then? So when I was married to Ken, he thought I was cheating on him. And even though I wasn't, in his mind, he thought I was. So what was he doing? He, he wanted to take vengeance um, upon uh, what was happening. So he was constantly letting me know, you know, like questioning, who, or, why did you talk to this person? Why did you hug that person? Why did you get so close to this person? So in his mind, he was always in a state of anger. And no matter what I said, he was going to let me know that he really thought I was doing something I wasn't supposed to. Even though I never did it, for years, that thought in the back of his mind kept playing out. So when I would try and defend myself, he would then use that to, to almost uh, to say as if I was defending myself, then there was more reason to attack me because then I must be covering something up. It became a vicious cycle. Eventually it eroded our relationship, you know, that and a few other things. But once the mind that is preoccupied with attack is inside of a space of vengeance, there is nothing that can happen until he is willing to see and change how he looks at the world. Until we're willing to do that, nothing is going to change. So let's go to paragraph two. It is from this savage fantasy that you want to escape. It is not joyous, I'm sorry, is it not joyous news to hear that it is not real? Is it not a happy discovery to find that you can escape? You made what you would destroy, everything that you hate and would attack and kill. So Ken made me what he wanted to destroy. He wanted to destroy this person who was cheating on him, but it wasn't real. It wasn't happening. His mind had him so convinced, why? Because his previous wives had cheated on him. So in, in his past, he was projecting me as a wife who could cheat on him and the minute he allowed for that possibility that I could cheat on him, he then began to see a form of vengeance. Everything was an opportunity for him to protect himself. So you made what you would destroy. He, he made that entire story something that he would eventually destroy, and it did. Everything that you hate and would attack and kill. So we ended up leaving this relationship where I know that they, at some level there's hate in his heart for me. I never cheated on him, but the hate in his heart came from the past that clouded what was there in the present. This is how powerful our ego is. 
all that you fear does not exist. That's sentence number five in paragraph two. All that you fear does not exist. Paragraph three, look at the world about you at least five times today for at least a minute each time. As your eyes move slowly from one object to another, from one body to another, say to yourself, I see only the perishable. I see nothing that will last. What I see is not real. What I see is a form of vengeance. At the end of each practice period, ask yourself, is this the world I really want to see? The answer is surely obvious. Is this the world I want to see? When you begin to realize that you have a desire for what it is that you want to see, and then you have what you're projecting. When we're caught up in our ego, those two things don't match. Ken loved me deeply and wanted connection with me, but he could not let himself experience connection because he was projecting onto me that I was somebody who was cheating, gonna cheat on him or cheating on him. So he went into vengeance. And what is vengeance? Well, vengeance is nothing more than pulling back that love that he had for me by justifying that I didn't deserve it because, gosh, I was the one who was uh, cheating on him, so therefore I should be attacked and killed. So that love that he had for me had to be in his mind killed off, which is why he ended up being able to leave our relationship. And as you can tell, it still touches me because I still love him dearly. But I couldn't make him change his mind for him. He had to be willing to do that. It's how powerful our ego is. So powerful. All right, we're complete with this lesson.